Have you ever found yourself sitting in a presentation, academic seminar, or dissertation group wondering, how do I ask a great question in this context? I remember encountering these feelings as a newer doctoral student and know that it can feel intimidating to ask questions in these contexts at first. The good news is the more that you attend, participate, listen, and observe at these events and practice the art of asking questions, I have found the easier it gets. So several of my peers have approached me over the last year after dissertation groups and seminars and have said something along the lines of, you know, hey, you ask really good questions and I was really humbled to receive this feedback. I always let them know it's mainly a result of having attended hundreds of academic presentations at this point in my career. I've learned so much from just observing, participating, and practicing. And so that's my first tip is I recommend you to do the same. Attend whatever you can. If we're meeting for the first time, hi, my name is Jacqueline Bolia. I am a PhD candidate studying higher education at the University of Toronto. And if you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on asking good questions in academic settings, then keep on watching. My first tip is to take really great notes during presentations. My note-taking strategy involves recording key information that I will use to develop my questions. Examples include important information about a study's context, the study's title. I'll try to summarize the research questions for myself. I'll make some notes about the theoretical framework and how it relates to the study. Key points about the methodology, the findings, and what the researcher has identified as implications of the study. As I'm taking these notes, I am writing down questions as they come to me. And I should probably mention what I'm taking the notes on. I am typically taking them on my iPad Pro using the app Notability, either through typing or using my Apple Pencil. I find myself continually reviewing my notes as I'm listening to other aspects of the presentation. As questions come, I write them down in Notability and I continue to take notes, but what happens is I copy and paste each question to the bottom of the document so that I'm ready for the next step. Next, I like to read and refine my questions, followed by rank ordering them to sort of figure out for myself which question seems to be the most important and helpful to ask in this context. Most often my top question is the only one I will ask because it's important to share time with the other participants and the presenter. You know, if I have more questions, I can likely follow up with them afterwards. That being said, if it would be difficult for the presenter to answer my top question during the time that's available, I might opt to ask a different question and return to that top question at a later time, maybe after the presentation or send it to them via email. My approach is consistent with that described by Tim Ferriss in his TED Talk called How to Ask Questions Better. I encourage you to check out his TED Talk and you can watch it at the link I provided in this video's description below. Tim specifically recommends that you avoid asking questions that are too broad or that the presenter is going to need some time to think about before asking. I think these are really great tips and I encourage you to check out his video after watching this one if you want to learn more. My next tip is that it's important to be as supportive and as helpful as you can to a presenter. My personal view is consistent with that of Beggiato, Campbell, Gray, and Land in their article which was published in The Guardian called Don't Be a Conference Troll, uh, a guide to asking good questions. I've included a citation and a link to their article in the video description comments down below. The authors of this article argue that presenters and audiences should typically view themselves as being on the same team. If it is appropriate to be friendly towards the presenters, and it usually is, then be friendly. And one of the best ways that you can do that is by being courteous with your questions. Even when a presenter has said something that I disagree with or I found problematic, I try to take a really respectful approach when engaging with them. You know, sometimes you might find yourself in a scenario where someone has said something deeply problematic or you feel that the presenter is being rather disrespectful in some way, shape or form. That's another video in terms of uh, tips on how to deal with those types of situations. I've made a note of it. It would be a great topic to return to at a later time. I guess for now, just know that taking a respectful approach, treating others as you would like to be treated will only serve you well. 
Put in other words, ask questions as you would like to have them ask to you. This is a great quote from an article written by Aaron Aspenleiter. I will include the citation and a link to the article in this video's description. Two more key things to remember. The first thing is that you might feel some real or self-imposed pressure to perform in these environments and sort of show what knowledge you have. Just remember that this isn't about you and it's really about supporting the presenters. I was reminded by this point when reading the Beggiato et al article on don't be a conference troll. Again, really check it out, great article. One of my takeaways after reading that article was that you know, if you ask good questions and if you treat presenters well, you're going to be the type of person that people get excited to see in the audience. The second thing is to be thoughtful and considerate of the presenter in terms of where they're at in their academic career. I was reminded of this point when reading an article by Danny Rabbiotti, and I've included the citation and link to that article in this video's description. And just basically, you know, remembering what it's like to be early on in your academic career and just to be very supportive and encouraging to those folks who are making some of their first presentations. That's not all. Here's a few more things you can do to be a great participant at presentations. The first thing that you can do is to use the microphone if there's one provided. You might already know that this will help participants who might struggle to hear you otherwise without the microphone. So even if you have a loud teacher's voice, use the microphone always. The next thing is to share the airtime during the question and answer period. If no one has a question, jump right up there. If other people are putting up their hand and saying that they have a question, take turns. If it's appropriate, you might consider allowing those who are earlier on in their academic careers to ask questions earlier and for those who have more experience to go a little bit later or they actually might not want that they might actually prefer the opportunity to hear some experienced folks pose questions first and then go afterwards but just creating different opportunities for people to participate when they feel comfortable to do so just being cognizant of this can be very helpful towards helping people to feel comfortable participating at many points in the dialogue it's also worth mentioning that the principles mentioned throughout this video are in many ways relevant to providing colleagues with feedback on their work during presentations and dissertation group meetings. Do these things and I think you'll be finding that you're feeling valued as a good colleague, participant, and in some cases friend. So with that, I turn it over to you. What additional tips do you have about asking great questions? please share them in the comments section as I know I and others would just love to learn from you. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a like so that others will know that it's a good video that they might want to watch. And if you'd like to be the first to be notified to receive future updates from my channel, please click the subscribe and notifications bell buttons. Let's stay in touch via Instagram between now and my next video. You can find me at the handle at PhD Essentials. Until next time, I wish you a beautiful, memorable, and productive week. Bye, friends.